Hi. This quiet debate about growing native versus non-native plants in our gardens. Some people are really keen on growing lots of wildflowers in our gardens. And at the other extreme, some people think wildflowers are weeds that we should avoid growing in our gardens. So where's the truth? Are native plants better for... There's a bee buzzing around my head right now. Um, uh, or doesn't it make any difference? Let's go and have a look at some of the plants I've got growing in my garden first. This is one of my favourite native wildflowers, Vipers bugloss. Absolutely stunning call. Vipers comes from the, uh, the stigma, the female bit of the flower, which has a sort of forked tip like the tongue of a snake. And isn't that glorious? The bumblebees love it, produces lots of lovely nectar. And these glorious flowers, it looks really nice in a herbaceous bed or anywhere really. Likes a dry sunny spot if you've got one. It's biennial, easy to grow from seed. Beautiful. Red campions, great for a shady or semi-shaded spot. It's a native woodland flower. Um, really pretty. Perennial, self-seeds quite readily. Separate male and female plants, interestingly. Lawns are a great place for native plants. Uh, this is the purple one here is self-heal. Then you can see there's some white clover, and in the distance there's buttercups and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Oxide daisies, of course, they're going over now, but they look really nice when they're fresh. There's a common car to be visiting the white clover. This giant beast is mullein. It's uh, shaped a bit like a big foxglove. It stands more than six feet tall and uh, rather spectacular native wildflower. Greater mullein this is. just seeds itself in my garden. Bees quite like the flowers but also you have the added advantage that you get caterpillars. Caterpillars of the mullein moth, that's what these splendid things are. I oh, don't begrudge them nibbling a few holes in the leaves, aren't they beautiful? Another one just, just there. Gorgeous. And that's one of the advantages of, of native plants is they don't just provide for pollinators, they provide for other herbivorous insects. This is thrift. Lovely seaside plant. You see it all over places like Cornwall and Pembrokeshire along the rocky cliffs. Really nice in a rockery or the edge of a border. Oh. There's a male amphidium, wool cardaby, just buzzed us. This is our native meadow cranes bill, very closely related to some of the garden varieties of perennial geraniums. Interestingly, look, there's a back there, if you can see it. It's a hairy shield bug. Rather nice little creatures. Look at these giant beasts. This is teasel. Another native, and uh, they're splendid kind of architectural plants. Definitely one for the back of the border, or here in the middle of the border, but hey. Um, these aren't yet in flower, as you can see. They have lovely purple flowers that open up in uh, a year. It should be very soon. Uh, and then later in the year, so the purple flowers are great for bees, and then the seeds they produce are really popular with goldfinches and the like. So, great all-round plant. No garden's complete without some of this. Foxgloves, native woodland plant of course, uh, happy in a shady, dampish spot ideally, but it seeds all over my garden. And I love it, it's welcome to seed as much as it likes. Favoured by long-ton bumblebees again, things like the garden bumblebee. Not everyone's cup of tea, but thistles are really good for insects. This is spear thistle, one of our native species. Very splendid flowers, you just probably want to make sure it doesn't seed too much. This is marjoram, a native plant, it grows in chalky soils in chalk downland and so on. And it's really good for bees and butterflies and hoverflies. So the back there there's a there's a red-tailed bumblebee, she's a bit tired. 
and yeah, she's slightly in the distance, but maybe you can just about see a small tortoiseshell. It's been a good year for small tortoiseshells this year. I haven't seen many for the last 20 years, but more this year than a long, long time. It's nice to see them there. This is one of my favourites, bird's foot trefoil. But this is native, it's a common native plant, really pretty and it looks lovely and this one's in a pot, beautiful. And it flowers for ages and ages. Look at this. This is a, nearly as tall as me. It's um, giant hyssop, agastache. It's, uh, it's a really beautiful North American plant, so it's definitely not native. It's visited in North America by bumblebees that are quite similar to UK bumblebees. And UK bumblebees love it just as much. And it's really pretty too. And what about Echinacea? Also North American plant and stunning. I, this colour form in particular I absolutely love. And so do bees. This is canary clover. It's actually the same genus as bird's foot trefoil, so it should really be a trefoil, not a clover, but anyway. It's a native to, I've seen this growing on the sand dunes in Portugal. So it's a Mediterranean plant. But it grows really well in the UK. And, uh, and bees absolutely love it. There's a, there's a common carder buzzing around in there. Lovely little plant. And this is catmint. No bee friendly garden is complete without catmint. It's not native. Who cares? It's gorgeous. This funny looking woolly plant is Stachys byzantina, which is really good if you want to attract the wool carder bee, because the females um, collect the hairs to make the wool they use in their nests. And if you grow one of these plants, you can almost guarantee getting uh, wool carders turning up. One just buzzed past. And there it goes, as if to order. There's a big, big male. They're territorial. They defend their patch of Stachys. Um, uh, and uh, any female who wants to come and collect the wool has to uh, mate with this chap as he buzzes about. So, you've probably worked out my take by now. Um, th there isn't a right answer here. Um, I grow lots of native wildflowers in my garden mixed up higgledy-piggledy with non-natives from around the world and I love it like that and I think Actually, if you just want to provide the most flowers for pollinating insects, then having a mixture is best. But if you've got a choice uh, between a native and a non-native, go for the native one, because as well as feeding pollinators, you have the added benefit that you might be providing food plant for a caterpillar, uh, for some native insects. So many herbivorous insects, things like the caterpillars and butterflies, have evolved tight associations. They'll only feed on one native plant species and they tend not to feed on non-natives because they never encountered them. So for example if you grow bird's foot trefoil in your garden you might be lucky enough to get burnet moths laying their eggs on it or to get common blue butterflies laying their eggs on it which are both beautiful native insects. So squeeze in as many native plants as you can. The only area where it gets this I think gets controversial is when it comes to seed mixes, med meadow mixes in particular and you often see seed mixes being sold which are a mix of native plants flowers and non-native plants and they're being sold as wildflower seed mixes and I think that's a little bit naughty because it kind of implies to me wildflower implies native and certainly if you're trying to recreate a hay meadow uh, which is a, a, a natural semi-natural habitat a very rare and endangered habitat in the UK full of beautiful native plants then of course you should only use um, native um, plants in your mix. On the other hand I guess if it's an urban area and you just want to create a splash of colour by sowing some seeds then um, a mix of non-natives and natives is fine it'll certainly be colourful and many people argue you get, you get a longer flowering season with some of the late summer non-natives um, but don't put up a sign as people often do, saying wildflowers, because that again is implying that they're native, and if they're not native, they're not really wildflowers in my view. Anyway, it's no big deal, and there's no right answer. Do whatever you think is best. And overall, just try and grow as many flowers as you can.
Thank you.